Welcome back to my channel. It has been a while and there is good reason for that because I am in an entirely different country than when I last filmed in a new state in my very own apartment. Did I say across the country? I'm on East Coast time now. I'm in a place where there's humidity. Uh, and it's just been a while. So here in my room, um, this is a new bookshelf that I got recently. $30 from Ikea. And this is a bed frame that I got for free. Uh, had to carry it up out of like a gross basement, but it was free. I thought in this video it would be good to do things you might not know about me or things you're about to learn about me. I came up with 10, I may have more, we're just gonna go for it. Number one, I now live in Columbus, Ohio, which seems really random and people ask me, oh, why did you move there? And what I wanna say is I moved here because I wanted to. Uh, and you know, because people like things to make sense. I like things to make sense. Why are you in Ohio? Why are you in Columbus? I wanted to. Also, I have family here, which is great, and I just wanted a fresh start. So here I am. And that leads me to number two, which is I now work at American Girl. And furthermore, adding a note to that, I am an American Girl nerd, uh, have been pretty much since birth. And uh, when I was a kid, I decided I wanted to work for American Girl Corporate. So uh, now I just gotta work my way up the ladder. And yes, I do have a college degree and I'm working retail, uh, but it's fun uh, and the best part about it is the fact that you get to be there on a kid's, like, best day. They're just, they've dreamed of coming for this. They've earned money to buy a doll. They're just, they're here for it. And that means I'm here for it as well. Number three. Now, this came up especially because of uh, a Brooke White Instagram story uh, a few months back. And then my cousin, who followed up about that story, about the highly sensitive person or being HSP, and when I first really heard about it, I'm like, oh, that's not me because I, uh, it's hard for me to cry sometimes. Like I, I know I think a highly sensitive person is like, oh, I'm crying at the drop of a hat, that type of thing. Or I'm kind of afraid of crying. So um, anyway, but as I started talking about it with my mom, who obviously knows me the best, uh, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm totally highly sensitive. And that is, I have al I've always been strict about natural light. As a young kid, I hate having, um, like, mi I hated mixing lights. I have a huge window. I'm gonna have the blinds open. I'm gonna use that as my light source during the day. I'm not gonna have an overhead light on. And I never wanna have an overhead light on. You got lamps that surround, create a nice, soft light in the evenings. I've been like this since I was a kid. And I remember this one time, because maybe I'll tie this into number four, because I have a very, odd and strong memory of just random events in my life. So I was playing Barbies with my cousin and she knew this about me. And so one time she like went and like turned on the light. It, it was during the day to turn on the light. And I was all like, ah, oh, you know, I don't like that. And I went and like turned it back off, you know? <laughs> so it's just, it's just who I am. And uh, the apartment that I live in now, I was like, it's honestly, the lighting is not super strong during the day, especially my kitchen. It's kind of a little bit of a cave, but when I open these blinds up, it works for videos. So I say it's great light. Number four, this is number four. Uh, I have very sensitive skin, highly sensitive person, maybe they're related, I don't know. Uh, so I can't wear polyester, neither can my mom and my grandpa couldn't, extremely couldn't. So, and now I say I'm allergic to polyester, which is because I kind of break out in a rash if I wear it. Um, it used to be like, oh, I can only wear cotton, but I've, you know, sometimes I'll wear other, like rayon, nylon, the cheap stuff. But I can't wear polyester, and I can feel, like if I'm going to touch a clothes, like a piece of clothing at a store, I can tell you if it's going to be polyester or not <laughs> before. Um, so yeah, I kind of make spine, cheap, cute clothes hard, because usually like the, like, if, if you want something silk that's not silk, it's going to be made out of polyester. So, uh, and a lot of time in pants in a oh, workout clothes are the absolute worst. Trying to find cute leggings, you know, that like at Old Navy. Trying to buy any of the workout gear at Old Navy, I cannot. It's all, all polyester, except for the random things that I find that are nylon, and then I buy them. Okay, number five is, most of you might know this already, but those of you who are 
randomly clicking on this video for some reason. Uh, I'm Mormon, which you thought might ring a bell or might not. Uh, proper term is that I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So it is a Christian church. It is a new church in America as in 1800s. Right here I have a, it's from Family, what, Family Tree Prints. It's from Family Tree Prints. It's a print of five generations of my family. And even beyond that, my family was Mormon. Um, and so uh, I mentioned this briefly just to say the reason why, um, the reason why I choose to have faith, why um, it's such a big part of my life is not just because I was born into it. The reason why I have faith and why I continue in this faith is because it's where I find my peace, doing um, all the things that build faith, which is in, in my religion, it's going to church, studying the scriptures every day on your own, um, serving, praying, all those things add up. It leads me closer to God. It guides my life for good. I'll tell you, if you listen to what God wants to tell you, um, you'll be led to places like Columbus, living a brand new life. And it definitely influences my choices and behavior for good. And uh, I would say kind of the standards in my church, uh, in my faith, in my religion, um, they make me a lot of part, large part of who I am. And... It, bring, it brings me peace, and I say like a lot of things in life make you temporarily happy, or you know, try, everyone's trying to find happiness in their life. But I think it's really important in your life to find peace and joy, and that's what I find in my faith. All right, uh, okay, number six. Number six. I'm not gonna do this anymore. Okay, number six is that my mom and I have the exact same voice talking over the phone. I only know this because people have said it because whenever I'm home, I have stopped answering the home phone because I know how it's gonna go. I'll be like, hello? And they'll be like, oh, hi, Jeannie, blah, 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 blah. But like, they'll go on, right? And I'll say, oh, hi, this is Megan, actually. And they're like, oh, okay, you sound just like your mom. And like, I know what's gonna happen, so I just don't answer the phone anymore. Thing, personality type thing, and this is number seven. Uh, I am an upholder, a, a little bit of an obliger, in the Gretchen Rubin's personality framework. Uh, so that means, for the most part, I can uphold inner expectations and outer expectations. This is outlined in her book, Better Than Before, which I actually have on my bookshelf over there, and in her podcast, The Happiness Project, and in her sister's podcast, which I also listen to, Happy Year in Hollywood. Uh, so this has manifested in my life where I can be very motivated to do things on my own. Um, Think people can tell me to do things, but also just do things on my own. And I see that circling back to about being Mormon is about scripture study. I started studying on my own when I was probably eight or nine. I just did that on my own. No one had to tell me to do it. I pushed myself. And I add I'm a little bit of an obliger because there are areas of my life, like say going to bed on time and being on time to things that uh, I could probably use a little bit more of an upholder attitude to be perfect at them, but you're not going to be perfect at anything, so uh, go take the quiz of this if you haven't already, because I have been following this for years, and I believe it. Okay, number eight. This ear is my right ear, and it is what I like to call a bionic ear because it was reconstructed uh, when I was young. Young little tot. I had tubes in my ears. I actually had them twice. And the hole didn't end up closing after the second time you get tubes, because that's what tubes are. They open up your drums so it can drain. Well, okay. Um, and so it didn't close up, and they tried to fix it a couple times. Like, with, I think when I got my tonsils out when I was six, they tried to do something at the same time. Nothing ever worked. Surgeries did not stick. So really what it manifested is slow hearing loss in this ear, and also anytime I went swimming or got it wet, obviously water is going to go past my eardrum into my canal, painful so I either had to uh, wear an earplug I got specially made earplugs um, I tried every earplug out there I'll tell you which ones don't work which is almost all of them and so I went for that forever when we moved to Canada I, I don't know I just kind of accepted that this is how it's gonna be uh, but uh, my doctor referred me to an ear ear nose and throat doctor and they, he was able to fix it they had this new surgery where they uh, actually cut into my ear. The only scar that I have of what's sort of like an accident or surgery is behind my ear. Uh, they took that, they took out some muscle, opened up my eardrum like a book, put the muscle in, closed it up, 
And my hearing went from like a negative, it's on a 2020 scale as well. It went from like a negative 30 to like a 15. So it worked. And now I, sometimes it gets a little sore still in water. But I can, I, I can jump into a pool without an earplug and not be thinking about the pain. Because there were so many times when I was a kid where all I wanted to do was just be able to just jump into a pool like everyone else, you know, just spontaneously. And uh, I can do that now, all thanks to my surgery. And I'm going to add in a little tidbit here, something you might not know about me. I am not very spontaneous. Everything is premeditated. Uh, very, I'm a planner, and I think that comes from anxiety. Now I'm thinking about this whole ear thing. It's like I couldn't be spontaneous. I always had to plan ahead. And that's just who I am. And I find comfort in structure, which is also an upholder thing. All right. Oh, such fun, such fun things I'm talking about. Uh, things with my body. Uh, so number nine, uh, gluten and dairy. Mm. <coughs> that hurt. They don't do too well with my body anymore. So I'm kind of half on like. I'm gluten intolerant, I'm dairy, I don't have celiac, but like I don't eat dairy sometimes, I don't eat gluten, it just depends on the day. It's a whole wishy-washy thing, but for the most part, I'm gluten-free. Like at home, I make gluten-free stuff. Sometimes when I'm out or at like events and things like that, I'll eat it. But it's just a, it's just a struggle, but I'm used to it. It's been like this for a while. Oh, I wanted to add in another thing. You guys are just learning so much about me. Uh, I am the national co-chair one of two national co-chairs, thus the co-chair, of DBSAs, which is the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance, uh, their Young Adult Council. So I joined the council all oh, three, four years ago, and then I became the co-chair last fall. And so uh, I help lead our team of members in creating content, podcasts, creating resources for young adults who deal with depression and bipolar disorder and mental health, mental, <laughs> mental, health, mental health issues in general. The reason why I do this is because I have bipolar one. Um, I have bipolar disorder, I am not bipolar, which is something I will correct to every day of my life, okay? That's just that that's how it is. We are not an illness, we have an illness. Now luckily for me, I have been in remission from serious symptoms of bipolar disorder, for actually five years this time of year and uh, I also I deal with anxiety like high anxiety which I also take medication for um, and that is often a side effect with having bipolar disorder but I still obviously deal with things every day um, little things um, I can live a normal life um, which I'm so thankful for because so many people have it way harder than I do and it's just something you deal with, and it's part of you, but it's not you. And uh, I'm grateful for that, and uh, I'll be sharing, hopefully, things the council does. I'll link to it. Um, we're coming out with some new stuff this year, which is really exciting. Okay, so my last thing I wanted to talk about, uh, things might not know about me. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even say this because I feel like I have not thought of myself this way my whole life, is that I am adventurous. And I'm not adventurous in the traditional type. Harkening back to the not being spontaneous and anxiety and having to plan. Because, you know, I think adventurous is like, oh my gosh, I'm going to like, I don't know, ski off the top of a mountain into downhill fast. <laughs> I uh, want to go boating or I want to go jump off cliffs or... I think about being adventurous, it's just like being spontaneous and like fearless and doing like adrenaline rush things but I'm, when I'm talking about I'm adventurous I can move across the country and start in a brand new place and I can do that so uh what I leave to you is consider more ways in which you actually are adventurous and to try to remove those labels that you've had put on yourself or you've put on yourself throughout your life of how you can't be something. I may not be adventurous in every aspect of my life, but there are plenty of ways that I am adventurous. I leave that with you. <laughs> I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna close out like it's a church talk. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna go shopping right now, and I'm happy to be back. And let's see what happens. Okay, bye bye.